I was waiting for a, a banker to drop off some cash to me. Uh, I only the only way I could f you can function in Afghanistan is you have to have cash because there is no banking system. There is no credit card. There is no check. So I had a big coat, uh, like had lots of pockets in that coat, and every day between a hundred to two hundred thousand, I would stuff in my pockets and just pay people cash as they were. Corruption is beyond words. It's um, the second most corrupt country in the world, and uh, I think it's well on its way to be number one <laughs> after Somalia. But um, So when you see people, um, uh, there is no laws, rules, or regulation. There is, you can't go and say, well, I just gave you 50,000. He could come in back and say, no, you didn't. You don't know what to do about that. It's not like the United States, well, I'm going to call my lawyer. You just, it's gone. That money is gone. So you just, you have to feel people and you have to trust. So I needed to make um, weekly payments to, to the staff and to the workers and uh, crew. And he um, told me that I, uh, I said, I cannot leave the set because I was shooting. Said, if you could please bring me $50,000 by 6 p.m. at this location. And he said, OK, I'm coming with a black car. And uh, I never met him before. He came. I saw a black car parked in front. I saw him, and he says, get in the car. I got in the car. He says, I'll, we go around the corner, and I'll pay you the money. Because I had to give 70000 I had 20000 and I needed 50000 and uh, all of a sudden, it keep going and going. And I am getting almost out of the city completely. And I said, where are we going? And he said, uh, well, how much do you have? I said, how much do I have? I said, where is my money? How much do you have? And he said, what are you talking about? I said, aren't you with the bank? Didn't you bring me money? Black car coming in, bringing me the money. He just laughed really like this obnoxious laugh that just chills, you know, in the bone. And uh, I looked at him. I said, what do you want? And he said, well, I could hold you and get some money. Or I could kill you and get some money. Uh, or if you have some money, you could give it to me now, depending how much you have. I said, I have $20,000. It was in my pocket. I handed it to him. I, I showed it to him. And uh, I said, you, if you take me, nobody's going to give you money, because I've already written letters not to release me from the Taliban if I got caught. Um, so that's useless. Um, but you can have this, but you have to take me back right now. And, <clears throat> excuse me, that's how I negotiated my deal with them. Um, the next thing that happened was, um, I think it was four, four days after that, uh, this guy who was driving me at security company, it, it was, we changed security companies quite often also, because you, know, you don't know who is involved with the security company. You know, one of these bodyguards, which we had between 80 and 70 a day, one of them could be, um, you know, the one that has ready to kill you. So I'm sitting in my car and um, with one of these bodyguards. It's about 3.30 in the morning. We're going to on a set, 5 o'clock. It's in about a couple hours of Kharga, uh, a little bit north of Kabul. And all of a sudden, uh, it's dark, so I'm looking for my telephone in my bag. I'm searching for it. All of a sudden, I felt something soft. And I put the light of my phone on it. There is a hand, a chopped up hand, sitting right next to me. Every hair in my body stood up. I said, oh my god. I said to the driver, I said, stop the car. I said, there is a hand in, in the other seat. And he looks at me, and he goes, oh. I, when I was coming to pick you up, there was a suicide bombing. The windows were open. And probably some limp flew in. So I said, well, get it out of the car. And he goes, no, no, I can't stop right now. i got to take you there, and then I'll bury it somewhere. Uh, 
I still think about that. It just... You honestly, you never think something like this could ever happen, and then when it does happen, and then you have to live with it, and it just to see either this was planned to scare me, or if it was a fact, the truth he was telling me. In either case, it showed to me how cold and callous people have become, how non-important death is, and a limb in the car is like not a big deal. Just to him, it was like yeah, another one. Uh, you know, another problem that we just got to take care of. And the numbness that people have seen so much death and destruction that um, it just was nothing. I, I don't know which one was worse, finding that or finding his reaction to it. Um, a lot of little and big stories like that happened.